Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's Hulu's original series, Wu-Tang, an American Saga. Season one, episode eight, entitled Labels. I absolutely loved this episode. The writing was spectacular. The cinematography was absolutely amazing. Subscribe, why have you subscribed yet? If you love the cinematic detail and the recaps that I do, I encourage you to subscribe to my page and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and i don't know if you noticed but i subscribe to whomever subscribes to me since this episode has so much detail in it and the characters are starting to slowly shift into who they are today that i'll recap the episode and review as we go along that's all coming up next <laughs> It's Bunny. <laughs> the opening scene, we see the words prelude to a dream, Houston, Texas. If you know anything about kung fu movies, majority of them tell the stories incrementally, starting with a prelude, continuing on with an act. So the prelude is the opening eye to begin a journey, to begin a story. So the writing in that, and if you caught that, or if you didn't, you see the evolution of how this story is about to begin. We see Russell and we see Genius and they're shooting dice and they're in Houston. And we also hear the music of the ghetto boys. My eyes are playing tricks on me. If you from Houston, if you from Texas, you from Louisiana, you know what that is and you know what that's about. So I love how they're entering in location associated with music and what's going on at the time. What happens next, we see Russell, he's about to shoot the, shoot the die, and he sees this animal. He's like, hey, yo, hey, 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 what the hell is that? You know, and I thought that was so funny because, you know, Genius is like, oh, you know, that's an armadillo. You know, they natives of Texas. And he's like, hey, it looked like a, a rat with a shell on it. You know what? The <laughs> and I thought that was funny. I am a Texas native and I have a friend that was from the East Coast and he freaked out the first time he saw a possum. He was like, is that a rat? Why is the rat so big? What's up with the eyes? What's up with the mouth? It, 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 does everybody know that this is okay? It, does everybody see? this I thought that was absolutely funny but it pulled us into Russell's humor because we see that he's very energetic and, and, and very animated but with the way that he speaks and we're starting to see more of him and it's introducing us more to Russell and his 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 character and what he says but I thought that was so funny that that armadillo freaked him out also another side note well-known director Quentin Tarantino is obsessed with kung fu movies and you see a lot of that artistry in the movies that he does as well especially the kill bill franchise to where we see the movie broken down incrementally like a kung fu movie to where we see the name of the act and the phrasing of what we're about to see amazing foreshadowing for bobby in the future being the producer score for movies such as kill bill we see that they've ordered a pizza, the pizza's delivered, Russell is carrying the pizza to a hotel room, and he interrupts, and he sees that Bobby is getting some groupie love, there's a gr the girl in there, and Bobby's like, hey man, you know, you gonna knock, he's like, man, here's the pizza, and Bobby is a little disappointed in the pizza because it's Hawaiian, you know, and the groupie, you know, she can care less, and she's just like, oh, it's Hawaiian, that's cool, and you got another girl coming out of the restroom, ooh, is that pizza, because they trying to focus on re-upping on that energy, you know, they've been in there just doing what they do and Bobby's getting dressed and the girls are eating the pizza and they hanging over each other's shoulders and Russell is telling Bobby hey man I'm loving being on tour so we know that they're going on tour so we see that evolution of why they're in Houston in the first place act one is placed on the screen entitled a tree falls in the forest and we're still in Houston Texas Bobby we see him going to the stadium he's going Going up to the stage because he has to do sound check and as he gets on stage he has the microphone he's going over a few of his lyrics because 
it's his single. They got to get his single out. They got to promote it. So as he's on stage, he's going over some of the lyrics. And as he's going over some of the lyrics, he's paying attention to the sound monitors and how he can hear himself and how he can hear the music. He can hear the music just fine, but he's saying, check, check. And he can't hear on his left of the sound of the stage. He can't hear himself. That is very important. And he's saying, hey, I can't hear myself on the left. Hey, and he's telling the sound engineer or the sound tech, hey, can you turn that down? I can't, I can't hear myself. Continuously being ignored. He gets down off of the stage and he goes to the sound bar and he's like, hey, excuse me, excuse me. The guy's reading a paper or a magazine could care less about what he's talking about. He said, hey, one of the monitors, you know, on the stage, you know, is, is off or it's out. You need to check that, check that because I can't hear myself. And the guy's like, oh, you know, the one in the center is working. You know, that's, that's what's important. That's what you need. It's fine. He's like, no, 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 but I can't hear myself. So for those of you that didn't know what that meant, if you've ever been on a stadium stage or theater and have had the opportunity to listen to yourself on stage, it's very important that you can hear yourself. And you think, well, why is that important? You can hear the loud music and you can hear yourself on the microphone, right? No. Think about if you've ever been to a loud party and people are yelling, hey, you know, you're liking the party? And you're like, what? And you can't hear yourself? You know what you're saying. You know what's coming out of your mouth and you know the vocals, but you can't hear yourself and you can't hear the audience. So we have that same equivalence that's happening on the stage. When you're on stage and speaking of a stadium, the sound circuitry is not the same all the way around. A person in the front row won't hear the vocal from the microphone three to eight seconds uh, to the top. So there could be a second's delay. I could say, go here, but in actuality, what's happening is go, 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 go. You get what I'm saying? There is a delay with sound. So majority of the time you see artists, they have those earbuds that are in their ear so they can hear not only the music, but they can hear what's going on in their microphone. So if there's a technical delay, if there's something going on, I can keep going a cappella with the mic and the audience can still hear me while sound and engineering in the back or on the floor can work out whatever kinks or technical diff difficulties that are going on. So you have to be able to hear yourself. And if you can't hear yourself and you get off beat, the track and you is going to be all off. That's why you see artists when the sound is not right and they get frustrated and they've messed up the whole song because it's messed up and they can't hear themselves. So that's why that was so important and he wanted to get that done. Bobby, he's so frustrated with the whack sound check that he gets off the stage just to take a break and he's approached by a guy that's a club owner. He's like, hey man, I got somebody that I want you to meet. He plays for Houston and, and Bobby's like, no, 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 no. I know who this is. Hey man, the way I saw you do, you know, in that, in that dunk contest, we know who this is. The way you threw the ball against the backboard and then you dunked it, like, man, I know who you are. You don't need to introduce me to who this is. And the guy's like, yeah, you know, I'm here for the concert. Much love. You know, I play for Houston, but I'm from New York. So, you know, they share a little dab and they talking to each other. And he's like, you know, nice to meet you. So we see that he's meeting new people. We then see the hip hop the hip hop connection, they want to speak with him and have a brief little interview. So they walk to the bar and he's just like, you know, telling her that she's cute and they sit down and he's like, you know, so what's going on? She asked him, you know, how is the tour going? And he said, it's okay, but he's not saying it with a lot of confidence. And she said, well, aside from the tour, how is your album going and how are things with Tommy Boy Records? Before he can answer and go into some in-depth detail we got russell that walks up and takes the drink that he orders and you know just knocks it down he's like hey bobby i know you're doing an interview but you know we got to talk it's really really important so he sees the urgency he tells her excuse me i gotta go handle something i gotta go talk with him she's like oh no it's fine so they start to walk over and you thinking there's something serious and russell says hey man we out of weed <laughs> bobby's like <laughs> 
okay, get you some more. I mean, we in Texas. What do you want me to do? We don't have any connects here. So, I mean, what you want me to do about that? He was like, it's going to be a problem because, you know. So, Bobby's like, all right, man, uh, let's see who we can talk to. So, he goes to one of the stadium, you know, uh, employees, and he tells them, hey, you know, we can get some weed. And the guy's like, yeah, you know, I got you. So, you know, Russell, he cool now. He, he He's good. So, after that, Bobby goes back to the sound tech and he's at the, the sound base like I still can't hear myself like are you gonna fix it I, I can't hear myself on the left side and the guy says well don't move around so much once again the disrespect and the tone of what he's having to work with of nobody really caring about not only his set but how professional that he's trying to be he's trying to be nice he's trying to let him know what's wrong and he's being ignored one of the assistants pulls Bobby to the side and he's like, hey, we got to start signing this merchandise, you know, some stickers, some posters, T-shirts. We just need you to come and look at it. And Bobby's just like, all right, man, how, how's everything else going? He's like, good, you know, what, what else is going on? And Bobby's just drained and he just seems like he's just so frustrated, but he knows that he has to keep going. And what they do with the, cinema, the cinematography is they allow a continuous loop and turn and pull we can see that it's busy and everything's turning and shifting amazing cinematography but anywho he goes and he's looking at the merchandise and he sees the the singles cover which is the cartoon and and he asked the guy that's the assistant with the label hey man what you what you think about this drawing what you think about this and he was like well you know it it's pretty cool I mean it doesn't look like you but I mean it's you know it's, it's, it's okay Bobby's just like, oh, whatever. So he gets to the t-shirts and Bobby opens the t-shirts and he's like, what the, <laughs> like, what the hell? And the t-shirt has not Rakim, but Rakim. And he's like, this, this spell wrong. Like the, the label ain't even getting that wrong. I, I can't, we can't pass out these t-shirts. Like what's, what's really going on? And I immediately thought about, side note, I immediately thought about that episode of Martin. <laughs> When Martin and Bruh Man was selling them t-shirts at the Whitney Houston concert and Bruh Man messed up the t-shirt because he spelled it Whitney Hutton. He's <laughs> like, no, baby, Whitney Hutton. <laughs> Bruh Man can't spell. <laughs> I thought, I thought about that. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Bobby goes to, <laughs> of course, Dre. You know, Andre, the manager at the time. And he's telling them, hey, man. They spelled the t-shirts wrong. Look, look, look at this. Look what I'm dealing with. He's upset. He's like, we need to fix this because I'm about to go on stage and they're about to pass out these t-shirts and it's not even spelled right. And Dre is just like, you know, calm down. I'll, I'll go to them and figure out what's going on. We're going to get it taken care of. Look, this is nothing. This is kibbles and bits to what you're, you're dealing with. This is, this is just t-shirts. We can fix that. A month ago, you had your tapes out on the block, right? Now, look at where we are now. You, you're on tour, man. You're about to go on stage in front of people like, calm down. We're going to fix this. It's okay. It's okay. Think about this journey. So as the manager, he's calming Bobby down. And he's just like, okay, you're right. You're right. Bobby leaves from Dre, and he's starting to walk on the other side of the state, uh, the stadium. And he's approached by this man with a hat on and very a, a, a Asiatic uh, jewelry on and a jacket and a hat. We already know who that is and I'll explain who that is in a little bit. But he stops him and he says, hey, hey man, do you know the meaning of Prince Rakim? Do you know that, do you understand that this is the symbolism of the, and he goes into this speech. And what I like about this scene is that they portray this experience through Bobby's eyes and how he felt at that time. What they do is they show this gentleman in this strong presence and all of the surrounding light blackens and we have all of the spotlight and focus on this strong black man and this light. And it seems to be little Bobby and Bobby has this look like, and this man is preaching to him and the powerful definition of this name and what Prince Rakim is. And he is just spitting just jewels and knowledge. And Bobby is just going through and through his ears and over his head. He has no idea what this man is talking about. And he's dropping gems on him. And he don't understand. You know, this young Bobby, he don't know. You know. And after he gets through with this speech, you know, he walks off. And Bobby, 
sees, <laughs> you know, Bobby sees genius. Genius putting his hand on his shoulder and Bobby like, hey, yo, man, who was that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, you know, genius tells him, hey, man, that's just ice. And, you know, just Ice, you know, anytime he goes to a club or performance, he demands that attention and that power and that energy. You carrying a name like that, he just trying to drop jewels on you and understanding what that name means. And if you're going to carry that name, you've got to know the history, the, the, the power of that name that you carry. So a side note for those of you who don't know, Just Ice is the inimitable Joseph Williams, amazing rapper from the East Side. If you don't know who he is, that's a totally different video. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I know about this brother, okay? So that's real hip hop. You gotta know about that. Another side note, you know, KRS-One and Just Ice, they were discovered in the same homeless shelter that they were in. That's deep within itself. Uh, KRS-One, we might need a documentary series for you, but moving on. Then we got Genius and Bobby talking and they're on the steps and he's telling Bobby, you gotta understand your power as not only the black man, but the original man. You gotta know your dominance, your talents, who you are. And Bobby was like, man, you know, that stuff that he was just telling me, it was like I didn't understand half of it. And, and, and it seemed like BS, but yeah, you know, I, I, I guess you're right. And he's telling me, yeah, you got to understand that, cousin. Like, you got to understand who you are. Look where we are. Look what we've accomplished. And he's like, you know, that's right. So they share a cousin moment. So he gets up. And when he gets up to head back to the stage to try sound check again, he sees just ice on the stage. And he's like, hey, yo, man, hey, you down there. I can't hear myself. Fix that, sh you know. <laughs> and I know you can because you've done it before. Fix that, you know. And the guy at the bottom is like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, man. I'll get it fixed in a few minutes. Bobby takes note of that. Wow. Bobby is pulled to the side by a stylist, and she has two outfits in her hand, and she's just like, okay, so which one are you wearing? And he looks at it, and it's a bright yellow outfit, and then a real bright blue one. And he's just like, what happened to the fatigue jacket that I picked out and we see Russell he's on the stage and he got a fatigue jacket on and she's like oh well you know your background dancer he's gonna wear it he says that's for him and Bobby like yo man you know that was my jacket and Russell like I'm wearing this tonight that's fly you know I'm, ah, that's what I'm wearing you know and Bobby is just like <laughs> he can't catch a break so then you know genius and him they standing side by side and they, they both in this whack journey together and Bobby says hey you know just with some silver lining we go and perform past the bone tonight you know and, and genius is like yeah I like that I, I, I like that and they walk to the stage and he telling Russell hey we gonna perform this 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 song past the bone you know and Russell like yeah you know I like that and I love performing that so they they amped up about that so that it gives Bobby at least a little boost in knowing I got something that I can be happy about when I perform so then we have Dre approach Bobby going quick 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 everything is just quick preparing for this performance and he tells him hey you go you gonna go on first you know we got naughty we, we know that's naughty by nature they still in Dallas and not only will they probably be late they probably won't even get to perform so you gonna go first and Bobby is like I'm going on first like oh no like it's that's like performing to an empty stadium it's not even gonna be that many people here like what are you talking about and Dre tells him something super important. He tells him, I don't care if it's going to be 20 people in the audience. You need to perform like it's 20,000 people here. Because people will notice that. And that is so true for any audience. Because the word will spread that you're a good performer. So he says, perform like it's 20,000. Get up there. Kill the performance. Stop worrying about the wrong stuff. Think about this journey. Stop thinking about the t-shirt. Stop thinking about you opening first and and ain't nobody be here. Ain't nobody gonna be here. Stop thinking about that. Just perform. And when you perform, you need to kill it. We see the next act on the screen, Act Two, the ventriloquist dummy. And they are heading on their way to have a radio interview with WQ 93.3 FN in New Orleans, Louisiana, baby. And they are getting ready to have this interview. And 93.3 at that point was known for having really good hip hop 
popular interviews on their radio station. So it's Bobby's and Genius's first radio interview, and they're both nervous. But I think Bobby was even more nervous in this scene because he's pacing back and forth, and he's telling Dre and, you know, got Russell there. And as they're walking down the hall to get to the main lobby, he's telling them, hey, I really think past the bone uh, just be really, really important for him to have, for Genius to have on his album. He needs to have that out. That's for him, the beat, everything. We really need to have that for him. And Dre's like, yeah, yeah, that's something that he really needs to have. And Bobby's like, okay, good. So he gets to the lobby area and they all get there and they see that Naughty by Nature is in the lobby. And we got Tretch is the only one that seems like he's of sound <laughs> body and spirit uh, because the other two members, they are still messed up from the night before. And Russell makes it known like, y'all still got the same thing I had on yesterday. Like, you know, they, they were partying up. But Tretch was like, I'm here. I don't think they are gonna make it. So Bobby's just like, okay. He goes to the restroom. You can tell he is super nervous he is pacing back and forth he's thinking of lyrics he can you know spit on the radio he's 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 looking at himself in the mirror and you could just feel the jitters and the tension of him being so nervous so he leaves the restroom goes back to the lobby when he goes back to the lobby he sees that everybody is looking at the rodney king police brutality clip on the news and, you know, we got Genius that says, well, you know, they got it on tape and it's going to court, but the pig's going to get off from it. So, I mean, what else is new? You know, the pigs are evil. Still, are still relevant till this day, 2019. Hella sad. Hella evil. But anywho, we got an assistant from the radio station that comes out there. She sees the other two members of Naughty by Nature, and they're like, okay, what's going on? Here, Tretch is just like, I'll go on the air. We'll be just fine. They're going to sit this one out. So as they do that, they're preparing to go into the interview room, and we see that Russell and Dre, they stay behind this wall to just watch and listen to the interview uh, and they, they kind of take a step back just to watch and to listen. So we see that Bobby, Tretch, and Genius, they go into the main interview room. And the host of the show says, just relax. We're going to have fun. We're going to talk, talk about different stuff. Just see it. This, I'm talking to you, just, you know, a normal day. And don't be nervous. I hope that you all have prepared maybe some verses that you can spit on the radio if it comes down to that. So like, okay. So they got a few mi minutes before the show starts. Bobby is just kind of swaying back and forth in his chair and he's going over some lyrics and he's spitting some stuff. And she notices that he says a curse word and she says, well, you can't curse on the radio. You know, do, do, some, do some rap, but do not curse on the radio because if you curse on the radio, we will get fined and your label pays for that fine. So I don't think your, your label will be too happy about that. And she says, but other than that, I really like that verse you just did. I really like what you're saying. Is that going to be on your album? And Bobby says... Yeah, yeah, that had been on, on my album. And she says, good, because I know you got this song out now. It's for the ladies. It's cute. It's fun. But what you just did, we need to hear more of that. So please make sure that you put that on your album. And she turns and she continues to do what she's working on and she's preparing for the interview. And he turns to Genius and he says, hey, man, I really think that Pass the Bone, that should be your next single. And, you know, that's just going to light up the world and the beat and everything. It's just going to be nice. And Genius says, well, you know, the album is closed. It's done. Like, and Bobby says, well, it's done. Well, you know, if you need some producers, you know, some beats, you know, I got that. I'll just throw that your way. And Genius is like, you know, the game, man, it's, it's politics. It's closed. It's done. Like, I, I can't have it. He was just like, why don't you put Passable on, on your album? Like, you know, just, just you do it. And he's just like, man, I don't have an album, man. I just got this single. And you could just see the frustration that Bobby is having because he's just going back and forth in his chair and he's just bubbling over. You could just see the steam coming out of his ears with everything that's going on. And Genius tells him, hey, it's just these side whispers and notes that we're hearing before this interview starts. And he's saying, just play the game. It's okay. You, everything's going to be fine. Just chill out. Let's just do this interview. Let's just have fun. Bobby's like, oh. And so we have a publicist from the radio station that comes along. He's like, hey, we want a photo. So, you know, we got Tretch that turns on the end, his chair and genius. And he's tapping Bobby on the shoulder like, turn around, man. Take the picture. And Bobby wants to make it known that he's upset. He turns to that camera and poses and does that. Because <laughs> Bobby is not happy. Next act three, the princess 
new clothes, and now they are in Greensboro, North Carolina. We see Bobby, Russell, and another white guy that's exiting out of a store, and Bobby and the white guy, they are talking back and forth. Hey, didn't this store used to be this restaurant and all this other stuff? So they're going back and reflecting, reflecting back into some past times. So you can make a guess that this white guy is Bobby's friend from back in the day, because you remember, he was in North Carolina for a while when he stayed with his uncle and we got Russell is saying hey don't y'all have this popular like like Nick or picnic he was like oh you know freak Nick you know that was over with you know I think like a month ago and Russell uh, is upset because they're missing all of the big time stuff you know they missing freak Nick they missing the Mardi Gras in Louisiana he's just like saying how they missing all of this stuff and Bobby is just like you know Teddy that's my friend we you know we go back and we are confirmed that that's his friend from back in the day and his friend says hey Bobby explain to me with what this Prince Rakeem means and Russell, you know, he takes a step back. Like, I want to hear what you got to say. What do you mean, bro? Like, he, he stepped back and you can see, he steps back and you can see that Bobby is like, all right, let me get this right. Like, he prepares himself. You know, he stands, he was like, Prince, you know, Rakim, you know, it means that and it's paying homage to the original man, which is, you know, the black man, and that's me, and empowerment. And he goes and all this stuff, and you can tell he's done to practice to tell people what this name means and to give this whole schmeal about what he understands from, from it. And, 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 you know, Teddy, you know, the white guy, he's just like, that's cool, you know, but you'll still be Bobby to me. <laughs> and they share a nice laugh. So they're on their way to the record store, and as they go to this record store, um, they see a crowd starting to develop in front of the record store and Bobby has to go in because this is more promo to a single signing so he can sign on all of the singles and he can talk to the fans and he wants to know what people are saying in the street about the song and how they feel about him so he's really really excited and Russell's like yeah you know do it man do it man it's your time it's your moment you know and they're all happy and they're walking up closer and closer to the record store and as they approach the record store Dre is just like I'm trying to figure out where you were I'm glad you here let's get inside let's get ready for this signing he goes in he's looking at all the vinyls in the store and he's really really excited and when he walks in we have the record store owner he says you know i'm glad you're here everybody's liking your music we got the crowd starting to develop in the front that's really really nice and he's just like make yourself comfortable before we start and i hope these people don't mess up my store because there's a lot of people outside and bobby's like oh man you know if, if something pop off we'll keep the crowd under control it's all good you know let's just look around for a minute and they're looking through vinyls and they're looking at all this stuff and Bobby says, yo, you got all these kung fu movies and they all 99 cents? And, and the owner says, yeah, man, I've been trying to get rid of them movies for a while. You know, they've just been sitting here. They 99 cents. Bobby's like, man, look at all of this. And they're just really, really, really excited that they're seeing all of their favorites that are there. And he's just like, man, you know the Wu-Tang Clan? Man, I love this movie. And he's like, hey, yo, Bobby the Drunken Monk. You remember this movie, man? When he's like, you old dirty bastard. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. And they just having a good old time. Bobby picks a few stuff and he puts it on the counter. He was like, hey, man, let me keep these on the counter. I promise I will pay for these when we're done with the signer. The Owner says, with the signing, the owner says, it's all good, good gravy. And he he introduces him to a family member, and it's a little kid. He's like, I can rap too. And he's rapping, and he's spitting some rhymes. And Russell, he busting a beat, you know. And they all just having a good time. You know, it's po positive energy, positive energy. And throughout this episode, they have a lot of power down sound effects. So power down sound effects are when the sound goes doo doo doo. You know, so throughout this episode, you have high moments and high energy and feeling a certain type of way. And then it's doo -doo -doo. when the sound wasn't right and he's ready. It's like, doo -doo. it's just throughout. So and we feel it. And then it starts to become comical because once Bobby has a high moment of feeling some positive energy or something that's great that's happening with this tour, him, his 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 single that's out. It just is followed by that that power down sign. So. Before they can get started, you know, Dre, he's like, hey, Bobby, you know, let me talk to you, man. Let, 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 me, let me just talk to you. I, I got to tell you something really important. He's like, all right, you know, what's going on? He's like, the sample didn't clear. Uh, the Denise Williams sample didn't clear. And as you know, Denise Williams, that's the sample that's on the whole, the whole song. And I just got to be free. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da. 
And whoever owns it said, do, do, no. <laughs> and they said, uh-uh, to that sample. And it didn't get approved, so they can't use it. So Bobby's just like, that's the whole song, bro. Like, what we gonna do? And he's just telling them, I, we gonna re-record it. It's okay. So it's constantly this mess that just keep on happening. And he's just like, oh, okay, we just re-record it. And Dre's just like, we gonna re-record it. And it's gonna be an even better beat. And it's okay. Quit sweating the small stuff. It's a minor setback. But it's all right. We're gonna take care of it. We're gonna re-record it. No big deal. So Bobby's like, all right, man. All right, cool, man. Uh, we'll just re-record it. And you know I can produce, man. You know I can produce. I can do my own beats. And it's just like, yeah, you know, don't, don't, don't think about that. Don't worry about that. Just, just sit here. Get ready to sign the stuff. And then he sees still. He opens up the shirt and it still says Rakim. He was like, we still got these shirts out. You know it's wrong, and we still putting out the shirts to sign. And he's like, okay, okay, we get rid of the sign, you, the T-shirts. You just sign the posters and the stickers. And he's just like, all right, I'm signing stickers and posters with no shirts and no albums. Because they had to pick up all the albums that were in the store because they can't sell that single anymore. They sell it anymore of that. They could get sued. So they had to retrieve the records. They put them in the back. So he's signing stickers and posters with no t-shirts and no albums, no no singles that are out. And Bobby's at this table like, all right, all right, man, you know, send him in, come on. And, you know, the owner's just like, chill, it's all good. I'm going to let him in, and I'm going to open the door. So they get ready to open the door, and he proceeds with the signing. One detail that I left out, before he starts the signing uh, of every, all the fans that are coming in, He's kind of standing at the door, and the, the store owner is looking at the door. He's like, oh, this lady, she says she knows you, and, and she's giving a lot of details, so we'll go ahead and let her in. And Bobby says, no, 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 don't let her in. Oh, and he lets her in anyway, and she goes, Bobby, how are you? And we can see that it's the aunt that he hates. It's the same aunt who used to ab abuse him when he stayed um, with the uncle and he's just like hey and it's this really bad awkward energy in the room and he's standing like he's so uncomfortable and she says well you know you remember me and I got your two cousins here we came to see you we heard you was in town how come you didn't tell us you know you were coming into town and he has that look like it was on purpose like oh see y'all <laughs> you know but you know how people are they come out of the shadows when they want to be seen and only when you in the line not light and never when you down but she says you know you're in town you know you maybe you can get us some tickets and we can come to your show and he's like yeah we can we can arrange that and and she said, here, you know, let me take my, you know, just take a picture. And when she grabs him to take that picture, it's that smile that Bobby has, like, hmm, very uncomfortable. But that's a very important detail um, that I needed to mention.